everyone, my name is Rose, also known as T.A. Summers. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. So today's video is going to be a little bit of a different one that I'm used to. It is a TBR video, but not necessarily focused on the books that I have gotten um, physically or purchased um, by ebook. It's actually a TBR video um, associated with NetGalley. So I'm going to be going through my NetGalley ARCs. So what I wanted to do for this type of video is essentially go through my um, NetGalley approvals for the month, uh, for the current month in terms of titles that will be released, and also choose about 10 books from my um, backlist titles to be able to um, pick up and read from the ones that I have not read. It is a, a digital ARC or galley site. ARC stands for Advanced Reader Copy in which uh, publishers provide um, advanced reader copies or, or digital galleys for um, reviewers, book reviewers like myself. I've been a member of, of NetGalley since about 2011, so I've been uh, associated with the site for a long time, um, actually a little bit lesser time than I've had with respect to my book blog. My book blog, Riding Through Rose Tint Glasses, is actually, um, I um, started reviewing on uh, Writing Through Rose Tinted Glasses back in 2007, February of 2007, and my blog used to be kind of a, a, a smorgasbord of different things in terms of reviewing. So I would review books, I would review movies, I would review music, I would review TV shows and um, things like that. Um, the direction of the blog um, took kind of a turn um, around 2010, I believe, when I start focusing more on my book reviews. So essentially it kind of changed to more of my um, reading preferences and things like that. So I usually uh, review books um, that I got on NetGalley on my uh, site. I would probably, like I would post reviews either every day or every other day when I started out the blog. So it's definitely been a little bit in terms of that life happens. So um, there were times when I had um, essentially um, periods where I couldn't review as much as that, but generally speaking, I have been book reviewing um, off and on um, since about um, 2010, and I also have my Goodreads account, as well as um, other accounts that I have shared my book reviews on, such as Tumblr, and um, you can find those um, in the description below if you're interested. So essentially, to bring it back to the original point, um, in terms of my the way that NetGalley works is that you uh, request ARCs digitally from what's available from publishers on the site. And once you request it, if they approve you for that particular uh, eGalley copy, you can download it um, and read it on, on your preferred platform, whether it may be your Kindle or digital e-reader, or if, um, let's, say, let's say you have a, an eARC that is available in EPUB, then you can download the EPUB and read it under um, your preferred e-reader. I usually use uh, Adobe Digital Editions for my um, my uh, e-reading if I get it in EPUB. And I also have a Kindle account, so I will send to my Kindle if I want to read a galley that I'm approved for. So essentially, once you're approved for it, you can read it and you can upload reviews to the site um, itself or to um, other sites like Amazon, Barnes and Noble or um, or your blog or um, things like that in order to be able to share what um, you um, read from these advanced reader copies. So they have a system where um, there's a ratio system in terms of if you get approved for um, a book, if you submit um, the review for it, then you can uh, that counts towards your ratio. I have been reviewing so many um, different books from NetGalley for so many years. My ratio is not the best. And uh, ideally, it wants you to have like an 80% ratio for each title that you're um, approved for. I'm nowhere near that, unfortunately. But I wanted to try to get to that point, um, essentially, in terms of my um, goals for the year. So what I wanted to do is try to go back through my backlist titles as well as my current titles in order to improve that ratio. So essentially, I'm going to go first through all the books that I have been approved for for that have release dates in the month of November. And I'm just going to be brief with each of these and kind of give you an overview of 
when the uh, title is uh, expected to release or some of these have already been released but I've gotten galley approvals for them so I'm definitely planning to add them to my TBR I'm just not sure when this month I'll be uploading those reviews it a as I get to them I will probably include them in kind of a wrap-up video in terms of like on what a reading vlog in terms of what my thoughts are about each of them and um we're just going to go ahead and jump into it. So first things first, let me sort through my Met Galley uh, list because you can sort by pub date. And I'm just going to go to the very beginning of November before I um, do anything else. And my first book that I want to feature is um, Someday Maybe by Onyi Nabunelli. And this released in no on the very first part of November, November 1st of 2022. It is a title from Harlequin from Graydon House. And to kind of give a brief summary about it, uh, it is um, quoted as a stunning, witty debut novel about a woman, young woman's emotional journey through unimaginable loss, pulled along by her tight knit Nigerian family, a posse of friends, and the love and laughter she shared with her husband. So that was definitely something that um, appealed to me when I um, requested the book. And I'm definitely planning on reading that um, relatively soon. I really love the cover. I think it's beautifully designed and the colors are beautiful. I have never read from this author. So this and um, this is her um, debut novel. So I definitely want to um, be able to um, read this pretty soon. So the second book that I want to feature that I was approved for for a uh, NetGalley, this is a YA title. This is The Luminaries by Susan Dennert, and I've read from Susan Dennert before, so I'm very familiar with her work. I was really excited to be able to pick this up. And essentially, this was released the 1st of November as well. I'm definitely planning on, on getting to it sometime this month, but I'm not exactly sure when. The um, summary for this particular book is... From Susan Dinner, the New York Times bestselling author of the Witchland series, comes a haunting and high-octane contemporary fantasy about the magic it takes to face your fears in a nightmare-filled forest and the metal required to face the secrets hiding in the dark corners of your own family. So that's the sum of um, that. That definitely appealed. The next book that I was approved for that was re also released on the 1st of November. This is the best American science fiction and fantasy compilation for 2022. It is a compilation by John Joseph Adams and Rebecca Roanhorse. Rebecca Roanhorse has written um, quite a few um, books that I've um, enjoyed. Um, she's uh, well known for the um, series that starts with Black Sun. So this is a compilation of many different authors uh, in terms of like 20 different pieces that represent the best examples of the form publish the previous year and explore the ever expanding and changing world of science fiction and fantasy today. So that's the general um, description of it. So based on um, the 1st of November by Mariner Books. And I don't believe I know what Mariner Books is. Let me check that really quickly in terms of what, yeah, Mariner Books. I've never heard of the publisher, but That'll be something that I get to because I'm really interested in uh, uh, anthology collections and things like that. And I love sci-fi and fantasy, so I'm definitely going to get to it. And I love Rebecca Rowan Horse's writing from what I've picked up. So that's definitely something that I'm going to prioritize. It was also released on November 1st. This is The Prisoner by B.A. Paris. I am not sure if I've read B.A. Paris before, but I definitely have heard the name before. So this is published under St. Martin's Press, and I really look, love the cover of this, and this is an adult mystery uh, to read a brief synopsis for it. With behind closed doors, New York Times bestselling author B.A. Parrish took the psychological thrillers to shocking new heights. National hold, hold you captured with The Prisoner, a stunning new thriller about one woman wed into a family with deadly intentions. And to kind of go into this a little bit more, Amelie has always been a survivor from losing her parents as a child in Paris to making on, it on her own in London. She builds, As she builds a life for herself, she is swept out up into a glamorous lifestyle where she married the handsome billionaire Ned Hawthorne. But then Amelie wakes up in a pitch black room not knowing where she is, where has she been taken? 
who are her mysterious captors and why does she soon feel safer here in prison than she had begun to feel with her husband ned in the vein of behind closed doors and the therapist multi-million copy bestseller ba paris is back with a gripping new suspense novel so this is mystery suspense and so that definitely appealed to me and it looks like it's gotten pretty good reviews in terms of people who have already read it on netgalley you can see when you're looking in the netgalley interface uh um, other uh, reviewers thoughts they have an in-house uh, review system in addition to being able to post your reviews on other sites as well as like um, goodreads or tumblr or amazon or barnes and noble things like that but um and but this was something that i was definitely interested in in terms of mystery and suspense and i do like do, uh, domestic type style mysteries and um, thrillers so that's definitely one that I want to prioritize this month as well. So now I'm going to get into the books that were released on the 8th of November. And that was actually the day before this video was being uh, filmed. So these were just some, uh, re these were just released. So the first book that I want to feature is Some Dukes Have All the Luck by Christine Britton. This is, this is a historical adult romance. And it has a beautiful cover. I love the couple on here. I'm trying to remember if I've read Christina Britton before. I don't believe I have, unfortunately. This book is about to read the description. Ash Hawkins, Duke of Buckley, no more wants to marry than he wants a stick in his eye. As the owner of a gaming hell, he is all too aware of the odds of a happy marriage are against him. But raising his three rebellious wards alone is proving more than he can handle. He needs to find someone who stands to benefit from a marriage of convenience as much as he does. So this is a marriage of convenience. Someone logical, clinical, and rational as a, in a stroke of luck, he quite literally stumbles over just such a woman. After years of ridicule of being more interested in bugs than boys, aw, Bronwyn has accepted that she'll never marry for love. Her parents, however, are threatening to find her a husband. Bronwyn doesn't need any scientific research to show Ash her secrets but his proposal would give her the freedom to continue her entomology research and perhaps finally get published. Just as long as she can keep her mind on her work and off his piercing eyes, broad shoulders, and wicked, wicked tongue. So that 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 um, reminded me of um, how much I really wanted to read this in terms of revisiting the description. So I'm excited to be able to read that this month, but that is really cute. I, I love the, it's not that like I gravitate uh, towards um, marriage of convenience uh, type tropes but I do like um, in terms of like you know the opposites type of, of attraction and um, seeing uh, dynamics like this in romance so I'm excited to be able to get to this one. See the next um, book that I wanted to feature that I was approved for that is also releasing November 8th of 2022 this is a sweet low country proposal by uh, Prislasia Williams and this is essentially a um, own voices romance in general fiction uh, this is the sequel to a low Cr country bride and unfortunately I have not read a low country bride quite yet so this is probably going to be a little bit of a delayed read so I will try to see if I can pick up um, uh, a low country ride before I pick up this one. It has a really cute cover. I'm glad that to say that I actually own the first book in the series, so I'm definitely going to be able to get to that pretty soon. Um, I don't want to necessarily read the um, description because I don't want to spoil myself for it, but I am planning on reading this. So the next book that I want to feature is Legends and Lattes by Travis Baldry, and I did get approved for um, this um, particular book. Um, and it, slightly before it was released so I did not expect to get a, a approval for it but I did buy, uh, also buy a copy of it um, from like in addition to getting the galley for it so this was published by Macmillan Tor Forge it was indeed published before and I'm excited to be able to pick this up this is a very cozy uh, tight um, uh, uh, slice of life uh, fantasy novel featuring um, to otherworldly um, creatures uh, and um, running a coffee shop. And it looks really, really cute. Like 
I, I can't even begin to um, say how much I love the cover for this and the premise of this. It's really nice. But um, I'm hoping to be able to get to this very soon because I do have my physical copy of it and I, I wanted to prioritize reading it for this particular month. And the last book that was released on November 8th of 2022, this is one that I literally just got approved for from um, uh, Random House Children's. So this is Future Land Battle for, for the Part by H.D. Hunter. And this is a middle grade sci-fi and fantasy uh, book. And I, I love the cover of it. I also love the premise of this. Just to give um, you a brief um, snippet for it. When a, an extraordinary flying theme park arrives above Atlanta, one boy must stop a sinister force from stealing the park's tech and taking over the world. An electrifying illustrated series from the Afrofuturism of Black Panther that took the world by storm. Perfect for fans of Spider-Man Miles Morales. That's actually like um something that is definitely up my alley and I'm really excited to be able to um, read this. I don't read a lot of middle grade. Um, but I do, um, whenever I do pick it up, I really enjoy the titles that I have um, been able to read. So this is definitely on my priority list to be able to read, and I hope to get to it pretty soon. So these next three books are um, going to be released on November 15th. So that'll be the week after this uh, video is posted. So I have three of them to feature for you. Um, one of them is a graphic novel. This is Cowboy Bebop Supernova Swing a graphic novel by Dan Waters. And so I'm a very big fan of the series Cowboy Bebop, um, especially the anime. This takes after more of the live action series that was um, unfortunately canceled on Netflix. I've watched a few of the episodes. Not, I, I like the direction that they um, took with it, even if it's very different from the um, anime, anime um, series that it was based on. I, I wish that it could have had another season to be able to develop the characters and the conflict, but I'm definitely excited to be able to pick up this graphic novel that has a bit of the continuation of the spirit of the live action series. And even the cover has John Cho's um, image of Spike um, here. And it's actually a, like, like just a really nice like um, coloring and illustration of like that's kind of in the heart of the series. So I'm excited to be able to um, pick it up. I don't know if I mentioned the uh, publisher for the Cowboy Bebop manga uh, uh, graphic novel, but it is published by Titan Books, Titan Comics, just FYI. Next book that is also uh, releasing on November 15th is Before I Let Go by Kennedy Ryan. This is a women's fiction romance, adult um, fiction. And this is uh, published by Forever, also under um, Grand Central Publishing. I've read a number of uh, forever titles and I've read a couple of Kennedy Ryan's um, books my favorite of which is real um so for this particular novel this is I believe a um, contemporary um romance though it has um difficult issues within it so um to um read the description award winning and best-selling powerhouse author Kennedy Ryan is at her absolute best in this compelling scorching novel about hope and healing and what it truly means to love for a lifetime. Their love was supposed to last forever, but when life delivered blow after devastating blow, Yasmin and jo Josiah Wade found that love alone couldn't solve or save everything. It couldn't save their marriage. Yasmin wasn't prepared for how her life fell apart, but she's fi finally starting to find joy again. She and Josiah have found a new rhythm co-parenting their two kids and running a thriving business together. Yet, like Magnus, they're always drawn back to each other, and now they're beginning to wonder if they're truly ready to let go of everything they once had. Soon, one stolen kiss leads to another, and then it's more. It's hot, it's illicit, it's all good until old wounds reopen. Is it too late for them to find forever, or could they even be better the second time around? So that's something that definitely appealed to me, and I'm glad that I was able to get the approval for this particular galley i'm excited to read it and i'm probably going to prioritize reading that within the next week before it comes out last book that i was approved for that uh, is releasing on november 15th of this um year is ravaged by naima simone and i've read a number of naima simone's uh books before but i don't believe that i've read this particular series i think i was able to 
get approved for it so uh, I, I'm not sure if this is the first book in this series or just a or if it's something that I can read as a standalone I may have to look that up in terms of the putting it on my priority list but this is considered adult romance and I do like the cover of it um, in terms of uh, the appeal from USA Today best-selling author Naima Simone comes in electric electrifying romance about a pro basketball player and a graphic novelist who can't seem to stay in the friend zone so giving you that um uh description i do love sports romances and i think that was part of the appeal for me um in addition to naima simone's uh, writing style that um made me want to pick up this particular novel so i'm hoping that i'll be able to get to it before it's released but i'm I need to do a little bit more research to see if this is a uh, part of the series that it can be read as standalone or if I need to read the other um, books in the series to be able to kind of get context from it. So based on that, then I'll prioritize whether or not um, I'll be able to get to it um, this week. All right, so the last bit of uh, books that are releasing in the month of November that I have gotten my Ed Dally approvals for are going to be released on the 29th of November. So that will be, I think, after Saving Holiday. So the first uh, one that I um, was approved for is Flirting with the Beast by Jane Porter. This is considered a uh, an adult romance and it was published by Berkeley. This is a um, book, a uh, book, uh, author I have not read from yet so this will this will be an author that is new to me I really do like the cover I like being able to read um, a, a div diverse spectrum of um, different um, couples and uh, romance titles so this was something that appealed to me in terms of featuring two um, older uh, an older heroine and an older um, hero so essentially this is um, also, um, this is appropriate for the season because it takes place um, during the holidays. So, a woman expecting to spend the holidays alone finds warmth in the iciest man she knows in the steamy and charming later in life romance by New York Times bestselling author, author Jane Porter. It has been five years since Andy McDermott lost her husband and she's finally starting to feel like herself again, ready to live fully. She's even started dating again, but when her holiday plans with her stepson and his fiance fall through, she refuses to spend another Christmas alone while everyone is celebrating with their families and pulse families. Impulsively, she decides to go up to her captain in Lake Arrowhead, a place she used to love to visit but hadn't gone to in years, not since the feud started between her husband and their nearest neighbor. Andy starts to rethink her decision with in being alone at the cabin and proves to be more challenging than she expected. A heavy snowstorm hits the air and Andy finds herself trapped there with no one to help except for their neighbor, Wolf Enders, uh, except for her neighbor, Wolf Enders, a military vet who lives full-time on Lake Arrowhead. Wolf is uh, as grumpy and intimidating as Andy remembers, but he's also unexpectedly kind and comfortably sexy. His presence reminds Andy that she may be older, but her body still works perfectly fine. Thank you very much. But can this good girl tame this sexy beast of a man? And will the snowy flame turn into a lovely lifetime? So that sounds extremely sweet. And I'm excited to be able to read it. I will definitely get to it this month. But I think I it may be a little bit before the uh, um, holiday that when I get to this and be able to post a review. But it's definitely one that I'm looking forward to. And I'm glad that I was able to have the chance to be able to pick it up. The next book that I want to feature is Five Survived by Holly Jackson. And Holly Jackson is a young adult author. She is the author of A Good Girl's Guide to Murder, which I have read the first book for, but I have not posted a review of it, but I really liked it. And I really want to read the rest of the trilogy. So I will probably prioritize um, a read, I do want to read this one probably before I get to the next books in this uh, series for A Good Girl's Guide to Murder because I believe this is a standalone a thriller about a road trip that turns deadly. Eight hours, six friends, five survive. Red Kenny is on a road trip for spring break with five friends. Her best friend, their older brother, his perfect girlfriend, a secret crush, a classmate, and a killer. 
When their RV breaks down in the middle of nowhere with no cell service, they soon realize this is no accident. They have been trapped by someone out there in the dark, someone who clearly wants one of them dead. With eight hours until dawn, the six friends must escape or figure out which one of them is the target. But is there a liar among them? Barrett's secrets will be forced to light and tensions inside the RV will reach deadly levels. Not all of them will survive the night. An incident classic, this thrill ride was named a best book of 2022 by Barnes & Noble and Indigo. So this will be released on November 29th. This is one I'm definitely excited because I love um, reading murder mysteries and thrillers and also um, kind of like that uh, suspense uh, um, part where like you have characters who are trapped in the same environment and they have to struggle with survival or find a killer. So I'm definitely excited to be able to get to this and I will probably get to this probably within the next week or so. Very last book uh, that will be released in, on November 29th that I was approved for. This is published by Harlequin, and this is part of the Harlequin romance line. This is Forbidden Kisses with Her Millionaire Boss by Hannah Sheik. Uh, this is an adult romance that um, is set um, during um, Kwanzaa, which uh, I think that was one of the things that I um, wanted to pick up in terms of um, this title, and I have not read from the author before. See, Eris and Lynn dreams of a life different from the one that has been planned for her, traveling from Kenya to Canada to work for renowned tycoon Carl on a Kwanzaa themed event is thrilling and their instant off-limits attraction blows her away. By the time the seven days of Kwanzaa arrive, even snow outside can't cool the sparks between them, especially after their sizzling kiss. Carl's a closed book and so will Lynn dare to trust in their unique connection. So I'm excited about um, being able to read this. and. The cover is super cute. I, I really like it. And I do like um, cozy romances like this one. So I'm excited to be able to pick it up. 